Deep beneath a quiet Finnish island, engineers are carving out one of the most ambitious structures ever built, a tomb designed not for the dead, but for a deadly creation of the living. It's not a monument to kings or heroes, but a resting place for radioactive waste, a poison so dangerous that it must be sealed away for 100,000 years, 10 times longer than all of recorded human history. This colossal project is called Onkelo, meaning hiding place in Finnish. It's the world's first permanent geological repository for spent nuclear fuel, a vast underground city of tunnels, shafts, and vaults buried 430 meters into ancient granite. And its mission is as profound as it is terrifying, to guard humanity's most hazardous materials until time itself has worn away their power. In a world obsessed with the immediate, quarterly profits, election cycles, social media trends, Onkalo is a project that dares to think in geological time. Its designers are planning not for decades or centuries, but for epochs, for a future that may not even include us. The Dilemma of the Atomic Age Nuclear energy has long been humanity's double-edged sword, a source of immense power, yet one that leaves behind a legacy of radioactive waste that remains dangerous for millennia. Since the 1950s, nuclear reactors have generated electricity for billions of homes, hospitals, and industries. But they have also produced spent nuclear fuel, a substance so toxic that a single gram could deliver a fatal radiation dose if mishandled. For decades, the global strategy for this waste was little more than out of sight, out of mind. Spent fuel was stored in temporary cooling pools or dry casks, often at the very power plants that produced it. These makeshift solutions were meant to last a few decades at most, a blink in the half-life of uranium. And yet, as the years passed, temporary storage quietly became semi-permanent. Countries hesitated to commit to a final solution. Politics, fear, and economics combined to keep the problem unsolved. The world's most advanced nations had mastered splitting the atom, but not living with its consequences. Then, in 1994, one small country decided to break the pattern, Finland's radical decision. Finland, home to just over 5 million people, is not a nation known for grandstanding. Yet in 1994, it made a decision that stunned the nuclear world. Parliament passed a law requiring that all nuclear waste generated within Finland must be permanently disposed of within its borders. No exporting it abroad, no leaving it in temporary storage, no waiting for future generations to invent better solutions. The people who benefited from nuclear power would also bear its burden. It was a moral stance and a pragmatic one. As Timo Aikas, one of the project's early leaders, said, if we use nuclear power, we have to take responsibility for what we create. It's our problem, not our children's. That law set in motion one of the longest and most ambitious scientific projects in human history a 40-year quest to find a safe, eternal resting place for Finland's radioactive legacy. The search for immortality in stone. Finding the right location was the first, and perhaps hardest, step. Engineers and geologists scoured the country, searching for bedrock that could remain stable for hundreds of millennia. They needed rock untouched by earthquakes, immune to erosion, and deep enough to isolate the waste from the surface world. After years of surveys, they found their answer beneath the island of Olkiluoto, off Finland's southwest coast. This remote island was already home to several of the country's nuclear reactors. Beneath it lay a two-billion-year-old granite formation, one of the oldest and most stable pieces of crust on Earth. It had survived ice ages, meteor impacts, and tectonic shifts, and it was dry, dense, and strong. The site was perfect. The decision was made. In 2000, construction began on Onkalo, the hiding place, building a tomb for 100,000 years. The idea of building something that must endure for 100,000 years seems almost absurd. Civilizations rise and fall in mere thousands. Languages vanish. Cities crumble to dust. Yet here, on a quiet Finnish island, engineers set out to create a monument that would outlast them all. Not a temple to the gods, but a tomb for humankind's most dangerous creation. In 2004, heavy machinery rolled into the forests of Okiluoto. Beneath the moss and pine roots, the work began, drilling, blasting, and carving a spiraling descent into the earth. 
The goal was not speed, but perfection. Each explosion was planned down to the millisecond, removing just a few meters of granite at a time. The rock could not be fractured or weakened. Its strength was the cornerstone of the entire project. At the heart of the design was a five-kilometer spiral tunnel, winding gently down through the bedrock to a depth of more than 400 meters, deeper than most skyscrapers are tall. Wide enough for heavy trucks, the tunnel would one day serve as the main artery of the underground repository. If you could stand it on end, it would tower higher than 16 Eiffel Towers stacked one atop another. Three vertical shafts were also bored into the granite, each hundreds of meters long. One would carry air, another machinery, and a third people. Engineers used a technique called Ray's Boring, a small pilot hole drilled down, followed by a massive reamer pulled upward, shaving the rock into a perfect circle. The process was slow, deliberate, and precise, a choreography between man and mountain. But even ancient rock breathes. Within its pores, microscopic cracks weep water. To prevent future flooding, crews injected low pH cement grout into the fissures, sealing them tight without corroding the copper and clay that would eventually lie within. It was chemistry designed for eternity. Every few meters, scientists paused to study the rock. They mapped fractures, tested pressure, and measured groundwater flow. Onkelo wasn't simply being constructed, it was being studied into existence. Every meter of granite told a new story about how the Earth itself would protect what lay inside. The Five Barriers of Safety, KBS-3 Method. The heart of Onkalo's design is its multi-barrier system, known as the KBS-3 Method, developed in Sweden and adopted by Finland. The idea is simple yet profound. Even if one barrier fails, others will hold. Together, they form an impregnable fortress between the radioactive waste and the world above. Number 1. The fuel, a solid core of power. The first barrier is the spent nuclear fuel itself, small ceramic pellets of uranium dioxide encased in metal rods. These pellets are incredibly stable and resist dissolving in water. Though highly radioactive, they don't burn or explode. Their danger lies in longevity, not volatility. Number 2. The canister. Iron strength and copper armor. Each bundle of fuel rods is sealed inside a double-layered canister. The inner layer is made of cast iron, capable of withstanding immense underground pressure. The outer layer is pure copper, about 5 centimeters thick, chosen for its corrosion resistance. Copper, under the right conditions, can last for hundreds of thousands of years without rusting. Sealing the canister is a marvel of precision. Engineers use friction stir welding, a process in which a spinning tool presses the copper lid and body together, heating them just enough to merge without melting. The result? A single seamless piece of metal as if carved from solid copper. Each weld is tested by ultrasound to ensure there are no hidden flaws. Number 3. The Bentonite Clay – Nature's Shield The canister is then lowered into a hole drilled in the tunnel floor and surrounded by blocks of bentonite clay, a natural material with extraordinary properties. When exposed to even tiny amounts of water, bentonite expands like a sponge, sealing every crack and forming a watertight barrier. It also acts as a cushion, absorbing any minor shifts in the rock and preventing water from ever reaching the copper shell. Number 4. The Backfill, Locking the Past Away Once all canisters in a tunnel are in place, workers fill the remaining space with a mixture of bentonite and crushed rock. This backfill seals the tunnel completely, ensuring no water flow or human intrusion. It transforms the tunnel into a sealed vein of stone, invisible, inaccessible, and inert. Number 5. The Bedrock Finally, the ancient granite bedrock itself serves as the fifth and last barrier. This rock has survived two billion years of geological upheaval. It has seen continents collide and glaciers grind mountains into dust. It will likely survive whatever the next hundred millennia bring. Together, these five layers form a passive safety system, one that requires no maintenance, no power, and no human presence. Once sealed, the system simply exists, obeying the laws of physics and chemistry, slow, steady, and eternal, testing the end of time. In 2024, Ankalo entered its final testing phase. 
engineers began trial runs using non-radioactive dummy canisters to ensure every component of the process, from sealing to transport, worked flawlessly. At the surface, a massive building houses robotic arms that handle the real fuel. Shielded behind 1.3-meter-thick concrete walls, these machines lift the spent fuel assemblies, place them into canisters and seal them shut. Everything is automated. No human ever comes close to the deadly material. Once sealed, the canisters are lowered by a special elevator into the underground tunnels where remotely operated vehicles carry them to their final resting spots. There, they are lowered into the clay-lined holes and entombed, one by one, like sarcophagi in a cathedral of stone. If all goes as planned, the Finnish government will grant Onkelo its final operating license by 2025. By the late 2020s, it will begin receiving real spent fuel, starting a burial process that will last about 100 years. Around the year 2120, when the last canister is sealed, the tunnels will be filled, the entrances blocked, and the site will be left to the forest and the wind. No plaque, no monument, just silence. The cost of eternity. The price of Onkalo is almost as staggering as its purpose. This is not a project that will return profits, attract tourists, or even be celebrated when complete. It exists purely to protect the future, a rare act of foresight in an age of short-term thinking. Over its full lifespan, the repository is expected to cost between 3 and 5 billion euros, an enormous sum for a nation of just over 5 million people. Yet in Finland, the burden doesn't fall on the taxpayer. Instead, the costs are woven directly into the economics of nuclear energy itself. By law, every nuclear power company in Finland contributes to a national waste management fund. For every kilowatt hour of electricity sold, a small fraction is set aside, money that accumulates year after year to finance not only Onkelo's construction, but also its long-term monitoring and closure. When the final canister is sealed a century from now, the money will still be there to maintain the site, even if the companies that built it are long gone. In essence, the cost of eternity is built into the price of power. Every time a Finnish home turns on a light or heats a room using nuclear energy, a microscopic portion of that payment goes toward protecting descendants they will never meet. This model is more than an economic plan. It's a statement of ethics. Finland has created a system where those who benefit from nuclear power are also responsible for its aftermath. It's a striking contrast to the global norm, where costs of environmental damage are often deferred, hidden, or passed down the generations like a curse. This is intergenerational accountability made real, a country acknowledging that true sustainability doesn't just mean reducing harm today, but managing the consequences of yesterday's choices for thousands of tomorrows. Onkelo's financial structure is as much a moral design as its physical one. It's a recognition that when dealing with time spans longer than civilization itself, economics must adapt to the ethics of eternity. Doubts, debates, and dilemmas. For all its precision and planning, Onkelo is still a leap of faith, a human attempt to predict the behavior of matter, rock, and time itself over 100 millennia. Unsurprisingly, not everyone agrees it will work as intended. Some scientists have raised concerns about copper corrosion, the most debated weakness in Onkelo's armor. While copper is famously resistant to rust, laboratory studies have suggested that in oxygen-deprived environments, like the ones deep underground, other chemical reactions could slowly degrade the metal over millennia. Even a microscopic breach, some argue, could eventually allow groundwater to reach the radioactive fuel inside. The project's defenders counter that those fears are exaggerated. The KBS-3 method relies on multiple layers of protection. Even if the copper were to fail, the bentonite clay and granite bedrock would still prevent any radioactive material from escaping. Their simulations predict that the canisters will remain intact far longer than needed for the fuel to decay to harmless levels. But the uncertainty remains. No one can conduct an experiment that lasts 100,000 years. In a sense, Onkelo is science meeting philosophy, where engineering must coexist with faith in the laws of nature. There are also larger ethical and philosophical debates swirling around the project. Critics question whether burying nuclear waste is the right choice at all. After all, the so-called waste still holds enormous potential energy. About 95% of the uranium remains unused. 
Future generations might invent advanced reactors capable of recycling it into clean energy. If that happens, Onkelo could be seen as burying a valuable resource that could have powered the world. Others argue that deep geological disposal removes the waste from human sight, and therefore, from moral memory. Once sealed, there will be no reminder of the consequences of nuclear power, no visible sign of the responsibility it demands. But Finland's decision rests on a sober realism. We must act with the knowledge we have today. Waiting for perfect technology is a luxury that future generations might not afford. As one Finnish engineer put it bluntly, hope is not a waste management strategy. For Finland, Onkelo isn't about perfection. It's about honesty. It's a commitment to handle what exists, here and now, instead of gambling on inventions that may never come. How do you warn the future? Perhaps the strangest challenge isn't technical. It's communicative. How do you warn future civilizations not to disturb a place like Onkelo? Signs erode, languages die, symbols lose meaning. A skull and crossbones might not mean danger 50,000 years from now. It might mean treasure. Some researchers have proposed building vast, warning landscapes, eerie, thorn-like monuments above Onkelo to signal danger through emotion, not language. Others suggest encoding warnings into art, myths, or genetic data. Yet paradoxically, the safest option might be to say nothing at all, to let Onkelo vanish from human memory, ensuring it is never disturbed. As one philosopher on the project put it, the best way to keep a secret for 100,000 years is to forget it. The first of its kind, but not the last. Finland is the pioneer, but not alone. Sweden has nearly completed its own repository using the same KBS-3 method, France, Canada, and Switzerland are advancing similar plans. Each faces the same daunting challenge, designing a structure that must outlive civilization. If they succeed, it could mark the birth of a new kind of architecture, the architecture of eternity. Structures not built for glory or beauty, but for endurance and humility. Onkelo, a monument to responsibility. In an age defined by short-term thinking, Onkelo is an act of radical long-termism. It represents something profoundly rare, a civilization accepting moral accountability across 100,000 years of time. When the last canister is sealed and the tunnels are filled, no one alive today will see it happen. The people who built Onkelo will be long gone. Their cities may be ruins, their languages may be forgotten, yet the structure they built will endure, guarding the silent fire within. It's hard not to see a kind of poetry in that, humanity for once, building not to glorify itself, but to protect what comes after. A message to the future. Perhaps someday, 50,000 years from now, a future civilization will rediscover Onkelo. They might dig into the granite and find the copper canisters still intact. What will they think of us? Will they see us as reckless fools who toyed with forces we couldn't control? or as cautious ancestors who learned at last to take responsibility for our creations? Onkelo's builders will never know the answer, but maybe that's the point. Some questions are meant to echo through time, unanswered, but not unasked. As Finland buries its nuclear past, it leaves behind a message, not written in words, but in stone. We knew this was dangerous. We made it. We took care of it, and now it is yours but may you never need to find it. So what do you think? Is this the ultimate solution to nuclear waste? Or are we burying a resource that future generations might one day need? Let us know your thoughts down below. We love hearing what you think. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the hidden world of engineering, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss our next journey into the most extraordinary projects shaping our planet. Until next time. Stay curious, stay inspired, and keep looking deeper.